Should you borrow from your 401k or take the dealer's finance at 1.9% interest rate? Let's talk about that now. Welcome again to the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends. Got an interesting topic because someone had named Chris had commented on uh, the video I did on whether or not I'm borrowing from your 401k to pay credit card debt. And Chris, either he or she, uh, asked, hey, is it worth it to borrow if I'm getting 1.9% dealer financing? So let's find out. It'll be interesting to crunch these numbers and see. So what we're going to come up with here is I have my little trusty spreadsheet, you know, very high speed there. And first and foremost, we got to decide to determine how a 401k loan works again. And we're going to say, remember, the 401k, you can borrow either the lesser of a half of your portfolio balance or $50,000, whichever is less. So if you have 50,000 in your 401k, the max you could borrow is 25,000. If you have 10,000 in your 401k, the max you could borrow is 5,000. If you have 150,000 in your 401k, the max you could borrow is 50,000. I hear you out there in YouTube land. So that's exactly right. So that's how it works first and foremost. Second of all, you just take your trusty calculator and you calculate an amortization schedule over 60 payments, all right? So that's uh, five years, 60 months. And basically what we're gonna find is if we're borrowing X amount of dollars at a certain interest rate, we're gonna pay it back over 60 months, that'll give us a payment that we have to pay, all right? Now, again, there's always a couple things when it comes to 401k loans. A 401k loan that's not fully paid back, if you leave that employer by their, they fire you or you quit, you're gonna to have to pay it back within, a, you know, real quick after leaving, or else you're gonna get hit with income taxes. And if you're under the age of 59 and a half, a premature distribution on the amount that's still outstanding on the loan. So there is some risk inherent in taking a loan from your 401k. Cannot let that be uh, overlooked at all. All right, so our scenario is here. We're gonna assume that you have 45, uh, 50,000 in your 401k, your vehicle is going to cost you 25,000 bucks. The question is, should we borrow the 25,000 from our 401k? Because remember, we can take half of that 50,000 out, or should we finance the vehicle? Uh, we're going to say the finance, the, uh, the finance rate is 1.9%. That's what the dealer is offering us. And the 25K borrowed from our 401k is paying is a 5% interest right now. Whatever your situation, I don't know, but 5% sounds about right. And again, that will be amortized over 60 payments, five years. And we know just running the trusty calculator that that's going to cost $470 a month. Now, again, where does that $470 a month go? It goes back into your account. All right. That's where it goes. It does not go to the bank. It goes back to you. So the question is, will that $470 a month be worth it compared to the cheap money we're getting from the dealership? And the answer is a pretty resounding no in this case. And how do we know? Well, we're saying we we leave our $50,000 in our 401k. We're not touching it. And we're going to take $25,000 from the bank. All right. So essentially, in this case, we have a net worth of $25,000. All right. Because we're taking $50,000 as our asset, $25,000 as our liability, our net worth of $25,000. Be, or we don't have any payments. Well, because we're allowing our 401k to sit there and our expected rate of return is 6%, we are thinking that we're going to have 69,826 back. Now, where am I getting this 34? Well, we know for a fact that to borrow against my 401k over five years at 5% is going to cost me $470 a month. So if we're doing even Steven here, we want to compare 470 a month to not only the amount I got to pay back to the dealership, in this case it's 436, 25,000, finance over 1 .9, at 1.9% for five years, our monthly payment is 436. So to make it 436, which is 470, what I got to pay back for my 401k loan, I'm going to add an extra $34 a month into my 401k. So these things equal 470 a month right there. So we're going to take this plus that equals 470 a month, which is the amount that we're going to pay back on my $25,000 amount that I'm borrowing from my 401k. So far, so good. So again, because we want to have an even Steven, after five years, I have no loan balance and I have a 401k balance of 69,826. 69,826. All right. So that's and that's not simple. I, I don't want to give you the uh, assume that's simple, 
but that's how it works. $50,000 of leaving my 401k is drawing 6% as my expected rate of return. I'm adding an extra $34 to make it equal to what I would have paid back on my loan if I had borrowed. And at the end of five years, I got 69,826 in there and I have no loan whatsoever. I was paying 60 months to the bank at 1.9% and it cost me 436 a month. On, instead, if I just borrowed from my 401k, I had 25,000 in the loans. That meant I only left $25,000 in there. Um, this is 25,000, this is a 401k, 25,000 in there. I had 60 months in which to pay that loan back. I'm still expecting a 6% rate of return on my monthly payments to this and my 25,000 that was left. But after the course of 25 uh, years, I am behind uh, $3,000. So that's my net worth after five years, $66,000. And we take this and we, so we take that minus that, we will get a value of $3,149. So at 1.9%, without any risk to leave my job early, it's without question worth uh, 32, basically $3,100 uh, to borrow from the bank or the dealership as opposed to borrowing from my 401k. Now, what if I get higher rates of return? Um, then this rate with borrowing would look even uh, from the bank now would look even more better or better. If I get a lower rate of return, the market crashes, then borrowing from my 401k looks better simply because I'm out of the market. At the end of the day, though, I think it's a pretty safe assumption. If you're getting that kind of cheap money, it would make sense to borrow from the bank or the dealer as opposed to your 401k. End of story. No, let's say instead of the five, the 1.9, where uh, maybe the, the interest rate's going up, whatever. So now we're getting a loan of five percent from the dealer. All right, so now we got fifty thousand dollars to leave it in our 401k because we're getting a five percent loan from the dealer on two on 25,000 so bucks. We're paying it back at five percent over 60 months. Our monthly payment is 470 which doesn't give us any extra to put into our 401k, which means the future value, our $50,000 that we're leaving in the 401k without that extra $34 a month going in is 67,442. So after five years, that's what I have in the account, which is still better than borrowing from my 401k because here again, we're taking 25,000 out of the 401k, we're paying it back over 60 months, over, which is uh, at an interest rate of 5% and we're paying $470 a month back, which means after five years, there's nothing left in the loan. So we're adding 470 a month to this $25,000 or expected rate of return of 6%, which in this case means we're only having $66,677, you know, less than a thousand dollars difference, but still, even though the dealer interest rate is 5% and the interest rate I'm paying myself is 5%, the facts are I have 25,000 less in my 401k in the first couple of years getting at 6%. And because of that is definitely more favorable in which to borrow from my 401k as opposed to borrowing from, uh, as, as, as much more favorable to borrow from the bank as opposed to 401k if I get a 5% interest rate loan from the dealer, all right? So what if I have a loan from the dealer of 7%? Let's take a look at this now. This is where it gets interesting. So I'm leaving $50,000 in my 401k. Same thing. It's growing at 6% a year. And in this case, it's again, it's going to be worth $67,442. But because my interest rate for my dealer is 7%, the payment is now $492. 60 payments, uh, $492 a month at 7% interest. It means me I have nothing left over in that loan. But here I only have 67,442 after five years in my 401k. On the other hand, at my 401k loan, I'm paying 492 back. Remember, it was 470 before, but because I want to make it even, Stephen, I'm going to pay 492, which is the exact same amount I was paying to the bank for my car loan. So $25,000 over 60 months over at 6% uh, is my rate of return. I'm putting that money back into my 401k at $492 a month. I now have $68,219. So it really comes down to the interest rate you're getting from the dealership versus what you're getting on your 401k and your expected rate of return. Now, there's a caveat in all these things. 
If you're going to pay cash money to the dealer, hey, Mr. Dealer, I'm going to give you $23,000 of cash or I'll finance the vehicle for $25,000. I'm agnostic. What's your preference? Now, a lot of times you can just say, as a buyer, I'm not going to finance $25,000. If you want to make the sale, you're going to accept this $23,000. The dealer's gonna say, oh, where are you gonna get that $23,000 of money, kid? And you say, right here, check, cash order, money order, whatever it is, money, just, I got a fat stack of cash, I'm willing, ready, and able to give that to you. So knock a couple thousand off the purchase price and we're in business. If not, I'm going right down the street. The nice thing about having the borrowing from your 401k loan ability is that it does give you that leverage to pay cash money as opposed to financing it. Because when they start financing it, you got the dealer fee, you got all the different things that go in there on top of the two or three hours of time it takes to borrow the stupid money to begin with. So I'm not using that as a scenario. Say I got 5% at the dealership and I can get 5% of my 401k loan. Well, in this case, I'd say, I don't, I'm not gonna borrow 25,000 from you. Um, I'm just gonna pay you cash at 23,000 and then you'd borrow it from your 401k. However you wanna do that, but when you have cash money, as the ability to borrow from your 401k, it does give you that leverage that you don't have otherwise as another source to make the deal for the dealer. Um, and so that would kind of offset some of the risk of borrowing from your 401k if you leave early and got to pay early penalties on taxes and then income taxes as well. But just remember, what it ultimately comes down to, if I'm getting 7% from the dealer and I'm paying myself back at 5%, it, it doesn't make any sense to borrow from the dealer, it just does not. If I'm getting 5% from the dealer and I'm paying myself back 5%, it probably makes sense to borrow from the dealer. It's just right there, that cusp. The loan interest rate from the dealer versus the loan interest rate that I'm paying myself. And I got to look at expected rate of return. Now, the, the, I caution with expected rate of return. A lot of people, especially they listen to Dave Ramsey, um, which actually bothers me, uh, they're going to have these uh, high expected rates of return of 10 to 12%. And I don't think you should do that. I think a 6% expected rate of return is adequate. If you want to have an 8% rate of return on your the money that you have in your 401k, it will make borrowing from the dealer look that much more favorable because you're leaving more money in the account to get the 8%. I think a 6% rate of return is, 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 is uh, the way you should go though, frankly. And because of that, you got to remember too, just because you're expecting a 6% rate of return, it's not guaranteed, my friends, where the loan is guaranteed. And if the market falls 25%, you're going to wish you borrowed against your 401k as opposed to taking it from the dealer um, and leaving all the money in your 401k because your net worth will be hammered. You'll lose a quarter of your net worth. So I hope this helps. Again, just look at the rate the dealer is giving you. Look at the rate you can get on your 401k. Uh, I would probably, as a side note, look at the rate of return you're going to get on the on the rate of return on the 401k. But if the dealer rate is significantly below the rate of the rate that you're going to get on borrowing from your 401k, I'd probably go the route of the dealer for sure. Unless you really believe that the market is doomed. And then in that case, you probably want to borrow from your 401k just to get out of the market to take a defensive action right there. So I hope this helps. Thumbs up, always helpful for sure. I am going to follow up with a video here. I'm working on now like a slideshow about borrowing from your 401k, not to pay off debt, but to ask, had, try to get some tax mitigation in there. And I think a lot of people overlook the benefit there as well when it comes to tax, man. I'll do that, uh, work on that over the weekend. Uh, but don't forget, thumbs up, comments below uh, for sure. Uh, any uh, thoughts, questions, concerns you have, put them in the comments. That's where I got this idea to do this video. And don't forget to subscribe right there. And then, of course, hit the, uh, the notification bell to be notified of future content. Thanks, guys. See you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. See you now.